Hi guys, Ryu here from Blender Bros and in this video I will teach you how to pick the best renders out of your own renders so you know which ones to put on your portfolio. Let's get started. Okay, so these renders are by Adrian and I picked them up on Facebook. I've seen this on our forum and I thought, you know, they're pretty cool. Uh, there are some issues in some renders, some are really good. So we're going to be talking about them and sort of go through all of them and discuss, you know, what I like about them, what I don't like about them, okay? If you guys would like to learn more about, uh, you know, camera work, lighting, compositing or composing images, post-processing, rendering, etc. We have a design course which should help you with that plus more, like for example, designing details, you know, etc. But also we have compositing for 3D artworks, which is a fantastic course and other courses like the generator course, mobile generator, which includes another part that uh, shows you how to create photorealistic renders and composites. And there's a lot of talk on camera work lighting photoshop work etc so this is super important if you really want to make your work stand out so look into these they're one of our best courses on that in addition you could join our membership on our membership we have tons of different courses that help you to push your uh, camera skills your rendering skills much further and each of courses actually has its own rendering section so i will highly recommend you guys look into that plus we offer a forum private forum to all the members where you can get feedback and we are quite active on that forum so if anyone needs feedback on the work you know we provide it so check it out all the links are in the video description so let's start from uh, this render which is actually really good i think it's um, uh, one of the best if not the best out of all of them although it's it's not perfect there are things out change what i like about it is the camera angle i right like the lighting the lighting is pretty difficult here because the, you know the surface of the car is really reflective there is an hgri in the background that reflects on the floor but it actually fits kind of it sort of uh, plays nicely with the with this car uh, although it ends up ab abruptly in here and there's a you know massive kind of like an empty space here which i'm not crazy about i prefer that you know this sort of building or whatever kind of continued all the way here i think it'll be better so maybe rotating this area a bit you know to the left would fix this problem uh, in addition what i would do i would blur the background a little bit more so uh, these uh, transitions between windows here you know uh, these edges are not so harsh and also uh, this uh, top part, you know, this top bit here needs to go, okay, it is kind of like a transition here. This is really ugly and this should be removed. So what I would do, I would change the framing on it to 21 by 9. So I would go here, 21 by 9. Actually, this is actually maybe too wide. So let's go back to 16 by 9 and sort of reframe this, all right? So what we want to do is we want to give this car a lot of room on the bottom because of these beautiful reflections. We want to keep them. So we could do something, for example, like this, okay? So put them in a, you know, put the car in the top right corner like that, right? And uh, have some space here for some logos. But again, if we do that, you see that, you know, this empty space here is actually competing uh, sort of like competing with a car and it's just pulling a lot of attention so again this is a bit unfortunate however you know like i said the lighting the angle the camera the focal length the you know uh, the perspective all that is really cool i will just play a little bit with the background and maybe you know try to move it or rotate it just a bit to fill this gap here or you know render um render it separately but it's going to be quite difficult because the, the you know of the car reflection so this might be a bit tricky but you know you could try to you could try to maybe like i said rotate it a bit in blender and sort of move this building a bit to the left so you know this uh, this entire structure here moves you know this way but other than that this is really cool i really like the reflections and uh, the lighting is decent you know so this looks really really cool presents the car really well there's a bit of a profile here so it shows the front and the, and, the, and the side a bit you know it's quite aggressive really cool now another thing is that the render is a bit dark if you're gonna look at the histogram it's a little bit on the dark side so i would just uh, either pull the shadows up or just simply pump a bit more power into hgri so when you render you want to pull it up a bit because you see these uh, blue dots here right this is all underexposed which means you, you're not going to see any details, it's going to be pure black. So when you print that thing, 
and let's say put it as a poster you know you're not gonna be able to see anything in here it's just pure black it's not gonna look good okay so you want to lift that up although in this case probably is impossible because you know these details here are gone this is not a raw file from the camera it's a render so there's no way you can retrieve that information but you know so be careful with that all right but this is a really cool render right another one that i really like is uh is this one this one is really cool again really nice perspective really nice angles beautiful reflections the only thing i don't like although um i'm not too bothered by it at the same time is this line going across i think it would look better if we remove this i think although if we did that you know this uh this background is going to be really plain so we need to see that without this line uh, without this you know without this uh, element here uh, to be able to tell you whether i prefer it or not but uh, i think it might look a bit better although the cool thing about this line is that it divides this um, uh, you know this image in a way and it doesn't cut through wheels so it's not too long uh, too low and it's not in the middle it's kind of like an upper part which is kind of cool and sort of echoes the uh the distance of the uh from from the bottom of the car to the you know to the bottom of the image so it's kind of um echoing the uh size of this of this um of this reflection uh, on the top so this is why it doesn't bother me that much but i think this is the best render out of all of them the framing is perfect you know the there's beautiful space here beautiful space here we get enough ground we got even some uh, room here for some you know logo and a sig or even here you could put some sig on the bottom looks very really cool this bottom right is a bit bright but uh you know but it's not a disaster okay this is really cool now this one is really nice too but a is way too dark always look at the histogram guys okay so when you render something bring it into photoshop or another whatever program well, you can actually see the histogram because it will tell you when stuff is too dark. If I go to, again, to camera roll filter, you'll see that you're going to have all these bits here underexposed, which is not a disaster, but, you know, it's a tad dark. I would just, you know, pump it a bit up so you can see a bit more of the car, okay? You can see a bit more of the car, especially if you bump the clarity a little bit, right? So if I do that and go back, boom, see how I mean? It just pops, okay? It just pops. So you want it to pop this bottom bit on, on the other hand okay this one this needs to go all right um i don't really think this contributes to anything it's just blurry and you know it takes uh, like 25 percent of the image doesn't make any bloody sense what you could do instead right is you could crop it um you know crop it here uh like this or even lower and simply remove this element you could do this probably in photoshop as well so we could try that, um, you know, you could try to do this with either clone stamp tool or, or content aware. And so, you know, use this tool here, content aware fill, and uh, try to remove it. But, uh, you know, it's better to do it in camera. So whatever this is, this is some kind of a building. Um, I would, uh, what I would do is I would render the background separately without a car then use content aware tool to remove that because you know this color here on the background right so uh this color here okay it's kind of a uniform the tone right it doesn't really shift much so you could select this whole bottom bit and run content aware it will fill this bottom dark part with this brighter color and then you're gonna bring the car back on top of it right and um the car is way too high in the frame i think it should be way lower than that um you know this is way too high the car should be i would say somewhere here so you're not clipping the uh the uh, the reflection you could if you want to but i wouldn't clip it and this will be a very rare case when you put something in the middle of the frame but it kind of works because the reflection is kind of an extension of the car so in you know um it's not really um that low but you could you could put it even lower like this maybe you know you could maybe you could frame it like that okay so go really low kind of like this this could also work okay and then you need something on the top because maybe some buildings in the background you know what i mean kind of like a reflective reflecting skyline like you have these buildings here just extending all the way here this would look much much better okay uh, this one uh, again uh, this is a cool perspective cool angle you you know you you know how to work with angles uh, so um this is this is a good thing the light again is way too dark on, on the car itself what you can do is you can lift the material color on the car up a bit 
So instead of lifting the light, you can lift the material on the car, it's going to become brighter. Therefore, it will reflect light and it's going to, you know, it's going to capture more light. But uh, the background, you know, you got dark background on a dark car. Okay, this is a problem because what you want to do when you have something really dark, you want to you wanna position it on, on, on a brighter background or background that it's way darker than the than the than the model in this case you have a black model so you cannot find anything darker than black which means you need brighter background so this one is a little bit dark okay um so i like the idea and this reflective floor and everything but uh yeah this is way too dark so if you didn't have this dark element here and you had only the windows or whatever it is in the back that is cool but again this is way too high okay this should be somewhere lower if you're gonna put this image lower in the frame you will actually emphasize the uh how low this car is okay and this is also something uh, that's going to you know kind of amplify this sportsy feeling of this car you know what i mean so when you put it too high it just looks weird okay you want to put it really low somewhere here it's gonna look much better okay and then again you got some corporate windows whatnot but this black thing gotta go it doesn't look good this is in my opinion um not really good um the angle is cool and it's interesting because it shows all these kind of lines of the car which is kind of interesting but uh it's kind of crooked and also again you got this black you know black front of the car on a very dark background so it kind of melts sort of with the floor you don't know where the car starts where the car ends it's just you know you can't see the silhouette of the car it's a problem okay what you could do in this situation, if you really want to go, you know, it's a kind of cool angle, just make it a little bit more, you know, more angled and put it somewhere here and you're going to be good to go. Maybe, maybe make sure middle, middle might actually work for this one. You know, a bit more of a Dutch angle, give it a bit more room in the bottom because I think it's a bit choking. Uh, I would actually, in this case, extend my image to the bottom. So give it a bit more of this reflective ground and, and do something like this. Okay. It's like it's coming towards you. Uh, but again, this dark background here in the bottom, you need to find some better HDI. This is a bit... Um, I, I'm not sure about this one. Um, I don't like the, the background. The background doesn't make any sense. Um, because, first of all, it's not following the series. You know, it's not reflective and it's just very different. So if you wanted to put a series of images in your uh, folio, I would avoid doing something like that. Unless you on purpose creating um, different looks in different um, in different uh, environments. Like for example, when I'm going to go to my art station, I'm going to show you what I mean uh, with the um, with the truck here. Where is it? Uh, this one. Okay. So one render is, you know, on a desert and the one is completely different, right? So kind of similar, but different, okay? Different environment. That is fine. But, you know, you have a series of images, so you want to stay within that series, okay? So I wouldn't, have, you know, I would avoid that. Uh, we talked about this one already, right? Um, this one is, well, way too dark. Cool angle, again. Not a bit framing, but again, in this situation, I would put it somewhere here, so it's not in the middle, okay? You want to offset it a bit. And then you got some, maybe, space here for like a vertical uh, name, you know, or something, and uh, a bit more space here, and some space for logo. But the background cannot be that black. You want to contrast it against something a little bit brighter so it's actually standing out and again look at your histogram man i mean half of the image is into darkness okay you know there's there's not many there are not many uh, brighter uh, tones it's really dark so this is not a very um very good idea this is okay but it's kind of it's kind of like a snapshot you know what i mean like this is a picture this, this is a photograph and this is a snapshot i don't know if you see the difference but there's a difference between a picture and a snapshot, okay? Snapshot is, um, anyone can do it. And this is a bit more artistic, so it's a photograph. Do you know what I mean? So you want this, not this, okay? So this is a bit on a dull side. Also, um, the angle here is not as interesting, and for example, as the angle here, and the, the form of the car, the shape of the car, looks very simple in here. It's very different than this, okay? And this is created by reflections, right? And the, the way light bends. And this angle is just unfortunate for this model. So if you find an angle that's unfortunate for your model, avoid it. And this top bar here, this line, doesn't make any sense in this image. So you know, um, it worked. Um, it worked in. It worked in this image, right? But uh, it doesn't really work in this image. So in this case, what I would do, okay, very simply, grab the, 
grab the marquee tool, select that, and simply run content aware, okay? Uh, and hopefully in, it's going to clean that. All right. Boom. You see, you, you remove the destruction from the top. See how cleaner this looks? And then what you want to do is you want to frame it tighter, okay? Because this is way too big, okay? You want to frame it tighter. So you want to frame it much, much tighter, okay? So something like this, right? You can go uh, for the for the reflection. You could go for something like this, actually, if you want to keep the reflection or uh, keep it in the upper horizontal in the, um, the rule of thirds somewhere here closer here to the left and to the right you want to always leave a bit more breathing space on the right side and boom and that looks really clean okay and you can put some logo on the bottom or the top and that's okay but again the reflections are a bit dull and uh, you know it just simplifies the form of the car whereas this for example looks you know far more interesting so yeah i think that's it um good work on 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 the renders and all that and i think you should just um I would just re-render it, you know, um, because you have a good theme going on, um, you have a cool lighting going on, you have cool angles going on. I would just refine it and make sure to remove all these destructions, and I think you're going to have some really cool renders to show for your folio. Also, you know, don't be afraid to edit stuff, okay, because, you know, this could be pushed way farther um, with, um, you know, with some cool toning. You could do toning through uh, stuff like infinite color, you know, something like this. We could even use some harmonization on this. Boom. See what I mean? And with simple click, we get a completely different image. Put some text on top of it and you, you know, and you're good. So um, think about post-processing as well. I always say that images should be post-processed um, because, you know, if you position something in your portfolio, then you really want to post-process an image properly. And um, I can show you guys images before and after uh, if you want. I can run a video on that and show you how important post-processing is for renders of a photography. It simply, you know, creates a distinction between an amateur and a pro because pro is someone who's going to bring everything to the end, okay? The, the final product is what matters because that's what your client's going to see. You know they're gonna appreciate the model, but if you're gonna put some zinc onto it, on, on it, right? Some colors, some some punch, you're gonna finalize it, put some text, some cool effects. You know it's gonna look way different than just a regular render. Okay, okay, guys, that's it for this one. Uh, thanks so much for uh, sending your files, Adrian, and uh, you know keep up the good work. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one.